Hey, what's going on guys? Alex here with TFL Bike, and right behind me is the brand new 2024 Yamaha Tracer 9 GT Plus. Ton of new cool stuff on this bike for 2024, including a radar sensor up front with adaptive cruise control, uh, adaptive suspension, a lot of stuff to go through. So let's get it out on the road. We're here in Boise, Idaho. Should be a really fun day. Let's go do it. All right, we are off in downtown Boise. And I am so excited about this bike. This is Yamaha's flagship sport tour. It uses their 890cc CP3 inline three cylinder engine that I'm very familiar with. It's shared with the MT-09 and the XSR900 that I have in my garage right now. But this new 2024 model is loaded with a ton of new tech and I'm a total tech nerd. And right away you can see that with this 7 inch TFT screen. That is such a good looking display on a motorcycle and it is massive. We'll test out all the tech in this video. There's a lot to play with and we're really going to be doing the kind of riding that this bike is made to do. Uh, this is meant to do long days of riding and lots of miles and I'm going to be riding this all day long so should be a really good test. One of the best parts of owning a sport touring bike like this is how many different areas of riding it's comfortable in. So right now we're just kind of cruising through town, riding through neighborhoods pretty slowly and it's a great commuter bike but also super comfortable on the highway and it has a really sporty motor in it so once you get it out on some twisty roads it really wakes up up and it can be a lot of fun. I know that because I used to own a previous version of this bike. I used to have a 2019 Tracer 900, which uh, brings up the point that this bike has had so many different names in just the past few years. For a while it was the FJ09, then it became the Tracer 900, then the Tracer 9, and of course the premium model, the GT, and now there's this, the Tracer 9 GT Plus, which is loaded with all the premium tech, and it's replacing all the other models, so you no longer can get a regular Tracer 9 that doesn't have active suspension, and you can't get one without the new radar cruise system and the unified braking system, so all the Tracer 9s now, at least here in the US, are going to be Tracer 9 GT Pluses. Which is a little bit of a bummer in my eyes because this bike is not super affordable. $16,500 is what you'll pay for this bike, which is $1,500 more than last year's Tracer 9 GT and a lot more than the base model used to cost. I know this was a few years ago, but the Tracer 900 that I used to ride, I think I paid right under 11 grand for it, if I remember right. So this is quite a bit more expensive. Design-wise, this new 2024 model looks very similar to the one it is replacing. Um, pretty much identical. The color scheme is different for this year. This is the only color it's available in, which is storm gray. So you have this kind of flat gray look here, uh, black tank, and then some of these bronzish, goldish stripes and same thing up here on the forks. It's a really good look and you even have some contrasting stitching uh, coming in on the seat. This seat is a new design as well, so you have a little more padding in the seat for this year um, and it's a new cover, a little bit softer, so should be a little more comfortable for those longer rides. And then if we move around to the front here, uh, Yamaha introduced this style a few years ago. Obviously you can see the radar sensor up front now. We have split headlight beams Beams. I've got both on right now, but actually one of those is the high beam. So if we shut that off, you can see only this side comes on with the regular headlights. Um, and I tend to leave the high beam on all the time. So it looks symmetrical and also you get a little more visibility. You have these running lights up top here. Once your lean angle gets above seven degrees, the inside cornering light will turn on, throw some light uh, on the inside of the corner. Over here on the left side, we have our remote preload adjuster uh, for obviously setting the preload on the rear shock. Nice big passenger seat in the back with 
with grab handles. And then you've got some mounting locations here to put a platform for a top case if you wanna do that or a rack on the back. These bags are 30 liter side cases and they do come standard with the bike. Push this little button here. I have it in kind of the unlocked mode right now so you don't need a key to use it. And then you pull it open. I've got some camera gear in here right now. And then you've got this little buckle to kind of hold stuff in place. And let's do a little test here. I've got my, my helmet right here. And I actually haven't tried this yet, so let's give it a go. I just shoved my helmet in there and it's a really tight fit. I think it's because I have my camera mounting system on here, so it's taking up a little more space. But if I really shove this close, I'm sure I could get it to fit, but I don't want to scratch up my helmet. So yeah, most helmets should fit if you don't have a big camera set up on the front of it. Now they are lockable too, so you can put the key in and set it to lock so no one can open them. And then if you go to the unlock position, pull the handle up and the whole thing comes comes off super easily and it doesn't leave some really ugly bracket on the side of the bike. So really easy and uh, yeah, to put them back in, you just kind of line that bottom slot up, make sure these two top points latch in there, fold the handle down and then lock it and you're good to go. That is so easy. And I really love that the bike comes standard with these hard cases because a lot of bikes you have to pay extra for these and most of the time these cases aren't cheap. Now don't let the bags on this bike fool you. When you get this on a twisty, it is a lot of fun. This is a really sporty bike. And it's all thanks to this engine. The CP3 is just so much fun. Case and I talk all the time about how much we both love this engine. And I liked this CP3 and the XSR900 enough to buy one myself. And even though that bike's a lot smaller and a lot lighter than this one, it is still so much fun in this bike. You sit up nice and high and the bars are really wide on this. So it tips into corners super easily. And I actually think it corners better than my XSR900 does. The spike handles so well. The quick shifter that Yamaha puts on the spike also makes sporty rides like this a ton of fun. And it's actually a new quick shifter too. The quick shifter on last year's bike worked on upshifts and downshifts. This one does too but now it works in more positions. So before it only worked on upshifts while you were accelerating, and now works accelerating and decelerating. And the same goes for the downshifts. It used to only work on downshifts while decelerating. You can now downshift with the quick shifter while accelerating too. So a lot more times you can use it and it works really well. There's a setting in the menu where you can disable the quick shifter uh, either up or down or both but I don't know why anyone would ever want to do that. You should leave it on all the time. Also, I've never been on this road before. This is a completely new area to me. And this Garmin GPS that I have pulled up on the TFT screen right here is a pretty big game changer. I can just glance down real quick and see a general idea of what the turns coming up look like. And that's one of the big new features for this bike is the smartphone connectivity. So obviously it has this Garmin GPS feature. Um, you have to pay extra for that. It's about $5 a month, which I don't think is too terrible, but a little bit of a bummer that you can't use like Apple Maps or Google Maps or CarPlay. You have to use this Garmin system, but it will also let you control your music. You can connect your Bluetooth helmet audio system up to this and your phone up to this and this screen, the dash on this bike kind of acts as the middleman pairing everything together. It will also display who's calling you, which is pretty sweet because whenever my phone rings, I have no idea whether I should answer or not because I don't know who it is. And it will also show you text messages, which is a little bit 
of a weird idea. I don't know that you'd want riders reading text messages while they're riding, but nevertheless, that feature's there. But I think by far the coolest part of the smartphone connectivity is this Garmin system. There's also a smartphone app that works with this, so you can kind of track your rides and do some other stuff on your phone, but I think by far the coolest part of this smartphone connectivity is the Garmin GPS system. It still shows you up on the top of the dash everything you need to know about the bike, like your current speed, what ride mode you're in, um, and you've got this little home button over here on the left side, and if you just hold that, it will switch back to your main dash, and you can do that while you're riding. If you only have the budget for one bike, or the space to store one bike, or your significant other will only let you have one bike, this is a bike that really can do it all. I mean, you wouldn't want to take it off-road, but as an on-road bike, it's super fun on twisty roads like this, but it's also a bike you can do some cross-country overnight trips on. Now on the left side of the screen, there's a bunch of things you can scroll through, different data for the vehicle. And on the right side, you can set three of those to be favorites. So whatever three you pick to stay over here constantly won't show up in the scrolling list over here on this side. A couple other things I wanted to mention. I really like that Yamaha's naming the ride modes now. So obviously rain, street, sport, and custom. That makes a lot of sense instead of lettered or numbered modes. And then if we pop in here, we can get our little menu to come up. Um, stability control, you can very easily just turn off with the hit of a button. So um, that'll turn off slide control, lift control, and traction control. It's really easy to do that and you don't need to go dial in and you know change your custom settings. So really easy to take care of that. And then also if we go into machine settings and then YRC setting, you can see this is where you're gonna customize your modes. So sport, street, and rain, they're all locked in here. Power, traction control, slide control, lift control, and suspension settings. You can't change to any of those for uh, these three presets, but it at least tells you how it's set. And then custom, you can go in and set everything exactly how you want it. And the way I've been riding is power mode in the highest, but then I have um, all the rider aids kind of set to the mid-level and then a firm suspension setting. And then if we go over to the next page here, you can see this is where you're gonna enable your quick shifter um, and also you can turn on and off your BC. Also something else I found really funny is part of the smartphone connectivity is this uh, audio equalizer which is really weird. I've never seen that on a bike before, but you've got a couple different presets, default, classical, electronic, hip hop, jazz, pop, and rock. And if you pop into them, you can actually adjust the different frequencies for the equalizer preset. Never seen that before. Very unique feature. I don't know how many people are gonna really benefit from this, but uh, me being a tech nerd definitely made me laugh. The bike itself weighs 492 pounds wet, which I think is a pretty reasonable number for a sport touring bike like this that you can load up with a ton of luggage. It can hold 425 pounds, so can pretty easily accommodate your luggage and passengers and whatever else. And also, I didn't mention it yet, but this seat has an adjustable height. It's in the lowest setting right now, but you can raise it up another 25 millimeters and you don't need tools to do that. You just pull the seat, flip a little plastic bracket around that's under there and pop it all back together. It is super easy. Bike holds five gallons of fuel, so quite a sizable tank for doing those longer rides. And overall, yeah, it's just got pretty much everything you need to go on a long trip. You've got a center stand and a side stand. You've got big beefy pegs with nice rubber dampers. You've got heated grips, of course, hand guards, a nice windscreen luggage holders, passenger accommodations, a big tank, um, and yeah, all the tech you could ever need to stay connected on the road. One of the most noteworthy features on this new Tracer 9 GT Plus is the radar cruise control. So let's give that a whirl. Basically, you've got this control over here on your left side of your handlebar. Click the center once, that'll bring up this little menu here, and then I can set my speed with the set button. And I'll pop my speed up to, let's say, 85 
let's go 90 miles an hour just so it's way higher than the speed I'm actually going and then you set your distance with this little finger toggle right here so I'm at uh, half distance right now if there's four different settings I'm at number two I'll switch into setting one the closest setting since I'm following another rider right now and yeah obviously this works following a motorcycle also works following a car and the guy in front of me is kind of in the center of the lane but I'm gonna try and make this hard for the system and move over to this right edge and yeah it picked up the rider in front of him so you do have to kind of you know position yourself behind whatever you want it to track if you get too far off especially when you're following a bike uh, it's not gonna be able to keep up a lot better with a car I would imagine I haven't tested that yet but cars are much bigger but it still works pretty well I think it's a, a really cool feature if you were spending a full day on this that would really help you can free your hands up for a minute on the highway kind of stretch out a little bit relax your body so cruise control is nice and the fact that it's adaptive um, is really sweet because you don't need to constantly adjust your speed you can kind of just merge in with the flow of traffic and the bike will do its thing you obviously have to pay attention still but it does a really good job the quick shifter still works when cruise control is active it doesn't disable cruise control so if you come up on a hill or something you can shift it'll still hold your speed and by the way cruise control works anywhere from 20 to 99 miles an hour which is a pretty good range of speeds it is getting super windy on this kind of middle of nowhere highway right now so I'm gonna pull my windscreen up it was in the lowest position I just moved it to the highest there's like 10 different clicks you can move through with the windscreen and when it's in its highest position it does a pretty good job keeping most of the wind off my head uh, when it's in the low position I definitely feel more wind coming into my head but this high position really keeps a lot of the wind off my body <laughs> And after using this cruise control system for a little longer, I gotta say, Yamaha did a really good job with this cruise control. Uh, the only other adaptive cruise I've ridden was the Multistrada, and I didn't get to spend nearly as much time on that bike as I did on this. And yet, yeah, this cruise control system is really smooth. I mean, it actually is applying brakes for you while you have the cruise set. It doesn't just let off throttle and coast till you get down to the speed you uh, should be at. It's actually applying brake. And even with my hands off the bars, it uh, does so very smoothly. I'm not like lurching back and forth. So very good system. The adaptive cruise is not the only system on this bike that uses that new radar sensor up front. There's also a new unified braking system, which uh, does pretty much exactly what it sounds like. So you pull the front brake lever, it's automatically gonna apply some rear brake and that works the other way around. You apply the rear brake pedal, it's automatically going to apply some front brake. The other part of that unified braking system though uses the wheel speed sensors, the six axis IMU, and the radar sensor to determine if more brake pressure is needed to get you to stop in time. So let's say there's a car stopped at a red light and you're approaching it, coming to a stop. Uh, the bike is using all the sensors and if it thinks you're not gonna stop in time because you don't have enough brake pressure, it will automatically apply brake pressure for you front and rear to hopefully get you down to a stop in time. It's not a collision avoidance system, so it won't grab the brakes for you if you're not on the brakes at all. You do need to have the brakes applied for the system to work. And I haven't noticed that kick in at all today on this ride, which I think is a good thing. I was a little bit concerned that riding in a big group of motorcycles like this, kind of tightly packed together, would cause that system to trigger all the time, but I haven't seen any of the warnings pop up on the screen. So it seems like it's a piece of safety tech that kind of just works in the background and you you can forget about most of the time. I'm not gonna run up on a car at the very last minute today to you know test that out and see if it works so that'll be one of those things we have to wait in here uh, as time goes on from owners how often it kicks in how reliable it is how good is that system and in case you're curious you can turn off the unified braking system but it's all linked to the BC the brake control settings uh, so you have to turn off BC in order to disable the unified braking system and when you turn off BC you also lose cornering ABS so it's either all on or all off 
and that's uh, something to keep in mind. And now back to the electronically controlled semi-active suspension. I mentioned that briefly. Uh, this is a new system on this year's Tracer 9 GT Plus. It's a KYB system um, and yeah there's two different settings for it in the menus. You have A1 and A2 so kind of a stiff and a soft setting. Um, you can tell a difference switching back and forth between them. Not something I can necessarily show on camera but my butt definitely felt a difference. It's a little bit of a subtle difference between the two modes but I still could feel a difference and it's fun to play around with that. And also both front and rear are adjustable for preload so you have a remote adjuster in the rear and then a screw on each of the tops of the fork caps up here to adjust preload in the front. Yamaha totally fixed the issue with the screen on this bike for me. Uh, a couple years ago Yamaha came out with this absolutely horrible split screen dash and uh, it just made no sense to me. It looked terrible and this is way way better. It's massive. It's a seven inch color TFT screen. Uh, it's very bright. I've got it at the max setting right now. No problem seeing it. I'm wearing sunglasses and a tinted visor right now and I can see everything perfectly clearly on there. It also switches to a white background night mode when obviously it switches to nighttime outside and it's all controlled with this little joystick and menu button right here which is a major improvement as well because previously they were using uh, that little menu scroll wheel that you had to click in and every time you tried to click it in you would end up scrolling it accidentally. I have made zero mistakes with this joystick uh, in the first four or so hours I've been playing around with this bike so the joystick is a major major improvement and uh, it's even easy to use while you're riding so for example I've got three different themes here on the screen I can switch through and it doesn't necessarily change the layout of how the information is displayed it just kind of changes the style but yeah it's very easy to cycle through everything for example putting your heated grips on while you're moving it's all super simple. And then of course you've got your mode button over here on the right hand side. You can change modes while you're riding. So we've got range, street, sport, and custom. Our rain mode has a pretty significant cut in peak power. Like really significant. Then you go to street mode, which definitely bumps the power up quite a bit, but you still have a decent amount of traction aids and rider aids. Then you go into sport mode where power is bumped up to the fastest setting and the rider aids get a little less intrusive, suspension stiffens up, and then of course you have your fully custom mode where you can dial everything in exactly how you want it. One thing I wasn't super impressed with was how you connect this to your phone. Uh, so you have to connect it Bluetooth from the bike to your phone and also Wi-Fi from the bike to your phone. And then if you want the maps to work, the first time you set it up, you have to use a USB cable and uh, plug that into your phone. So Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and wired to get this set up for the first time. Once you're set up, it works pretty, uh, pretty well. It's wireless if you're on iOS. You do have to be plugged in if you're on Android. Um, but it was a little bit cumbersome setting this up for the first time. I'm glad I had some help with Yamaha, but that's that. And uh, yeah, one thing also, I wish that was a USB-C port down there. USB-A is dying, it's an old piece of tech, and it's on a brand new bike. And one more thing I'm not super stoked on is just the look of everything down here below the dash. Um, you see a lot of metal bracketry, a lot of exposed screws, a lot of exposed wiring, which doesn't bother me on every bike, but for a motorcycle that's, you know, over $16,000, you're getting into premium pricing, and I'd love to see some sort of cover or something over that just to make it a little prettier. I had a blast on this bike. Obviously, I came into this video knowing that I loved this motor already, but Yamaha threw a bunch of tech at this bike, uh, and it was really easy and fun to play around with. The radar cruise control worked really well, was super predictable, um, and it was a strange feeling at first having a motorcycle apply brakes for you, but it all worked seamlessly, and I never had to think too much about it. This bike is really fun in the twisty roads, and it's got everything you need to get you on a long trip out to the twisty roads. 
So if you live on the East Coast and you want to do, you know, a long trip out to Colorado where I live, where we have some of the best riding roads in the country, this bike could get you there. And then it's a great platform that you can, you know, mob around in the mountain roads and really feel like you're riding a sport bike on something that can take you cross country. Like I said at the start of this, I'm a little bummed they no longer offer the non-GT or the non-plus model for some people that want a sport tourer with this engine but don't need all the tech features. That's not an option anymore for 2024. So if you want the Tracer 9, you gotta get the GT Plus, which comes in at $16,500. Still, I think for what you get here, it's a pretty good value, and I think it should be a pretty popular bike. If you're interested, they should be available uh, around the end of August, 2023. Thanks for watching, more bike videos to come this summer. Head on over to alttfl.com so you don't miss any of it. Catch you in the next video.